Hey, what's up friends? Welcome back to another episode of Bees for Build. We're back on the uh, the build that I don't I don't have a name for. Single seater custom supercar thing. In the last episode, you guys saw me make the base of the frame. In today's episode, we're gonna add some stuff onto the front to extend the width of the front of the frame out a little bit so it can meet up with our suspension components. Then we're gonna mount the frame to our suspension components. Then we're gonna throw some wheels and tires on our brand new suspension and we're gonna have a rolling chassis. It's gonna be a big milestone. I'm really excited to get started. So let's get down to it. Stay tuned. Before we get out of work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by eBay Motors. Super happy to be working with these guys again because they are real car people that are really passionate about cars. I know this because I, I hang out with them and they've developed a great app for buying and selling cars. Let's jump into the app and I'll show you around. If you're interested in selling a car, just hit that sell button right in the middle and they make it so easy. You can literally just walk outside to your car, nighttime optional, take a picture of your license plate and it'll auto populate the information based on your car. Did you guys remember I had a 370Z? I barely did. And all you gotta do is enter a couple more pieces of information and you are ready to be selling. If you're looking to buy, they have great browsing features. You can search kind of the traditional way, make, model, year range, or you can just enter in the exact car that you're looking for. Who doesn't want a C8 these days? Although it seems to be selling for a premium. And then you got my favorite part, which are the categories. This is where you can tell these guys are car people. They've built in some amazing categories to browse through different things like even for lemons and race cars and, and oddballs and all sorts of good different categories that you can browse through. And recently they added some new features. So you have chat, so you can talk with the different people in the car community and they have escrow. So you can use an escrow service to manage your purchasing deal, which is pretty sweet. Also, it's very safe buying on eBay Motors because they have VPP, the vehicle protection plan, which covers your purchase up to a hundred thousand dollars, which is pretty sweet safety. And right now they're running a promotion where if you buy a car on the eBay Motors app, you get a hundred dollar off gift card, which is pretty great. It made me wonder like, is there a car on there that might be like $100 or $200 where you literally get it like half off? There might be, I don't know, but if you wanna find out, you need to download the app. So go to the link in the description and download the app right now, guys. If you're a car person like me, this is one that you're gonna to wanna to have on your phone. It's just a great tool to have and it's a really great app. So check out that link in the description, guys, and go download it right now. Huge thanks to eBay Motors for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get down to it. We're gonna start off finishing off the framework. I'll jump into the computer real quick. So we have our two frame rails right here. We need to build a piece that comes off at a 45 here and a 45 here and matches up to this 25 inch long flat piece. Now the technical part of this is that the width when we're done from this piece to this piece needs to be very, very exact down to a 16th of an inch. So. I got a little bit of math -ing to do before I start cutting the metal out and start building these bad boys. So it's gonna be very technical, but once we get it done, that's like the last super technical part that I have to worry about. Uh, the best way to do this is gonna to be to use a flat edge and build on flat ground over here. We'll make them on flat ground. Once both of them are made, we'll walk them over to the frame and weld them on. Let's get started. My two pieces cut up and I got all my seams the way that I want them so they're all kind of hidden. Next step is I got to find a nice flat piece of ground over here somewhere, clean it all up, get these things all straight and angled the right way and start to tack these together. And then we'll move them over to the frame and tack them onto the frame. Now this is a pretty arbitrary pr placement uh, based on the model. Uh, so we're gonna start right here at this joint right here and then we're gonna be coming out then run the flat and come back. The really important thing is that this flat piece and the flat piece that'll go over there need to be exactly parallel with each other um, and exactly you know, square with each other as well. And then the width needs to be exactly the width that the uh, suspension system needs. So that's the really hard part. All right, I built some things, I put them in a spot. It's looking pretty good. Now, these are the exact right angles that they need to be and my math worked out and they definitely made it the exact right width that it needs to be. It's all square, which is great. But here's the one problem. Due to the, you know, the little bits of like the saw not cutting exactly perfectly straight, these are off by between a quarter and an eighth of an inch 
um, on all four corners, which means it, nothing too bad. Just gotta grab the sander. I'm gonna sand all these things down flat so they, they you know, butt up really nice. And I'm gonna be taking just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit off on each side. And then I'll run the tape back and forth, make sure it's all square, make sure everything's perfect. And then it will get tack welded in here. And that will be the base of the frame completed. Exciting. Okay, I got everything on there. I, I flipped it onto the side because I actually started welding it out and I forgot. I should probably give you guys an update. So I got these pieces on there. They are dead parallel and square to each other and everything's great there. So the front is three inches wider than the rear. So that's why it's kind of off the ground right there. Uh, but that is as designed. So now is the weld out stage. I'm just gonna go ahead and weld my ass off until all these seams are welded up um, because the frame is where it needs to be. Hopefully it won't move on me while I weld it and warp on me because that would be terrible. But uh, fingers crossed, it's all tacked up together. I don't know, I'm not a professional. Here we go. welded up. I am super happy with how my welding has improved over the years. Uh, for a long time, you know, Oscar's been doing all the welding because obviously being a professional welder, uh, I let him do that. But you know, this is my project. So I took it on and these welds are awesome. They're really, really good. And I mean, Oscar did help me get the welder dialed in for this, but damn, I did a great job. If I, if I do say so myself. So uh, if you guys see this car at SEMA, peep the welds. And now we're on to the next step, which is putting the suspension on. Now I know I've just kind of mentioned like, and that's where the C5 suspension goes and that's where the C5 suspension goes. So let's actually jump into that whole ball of wax and talk about it. This part requires a little bit of talking, but stick in there with me. If you're building a hot rod starting with a custom frame, you would normally go from that and you would set your width based on this and then you would try and figure out a way to bolt your frame into here from there you have to figure out the c5 geometry for the control arms and it's not just like a single plane it actually uses all axis to of, of offsets and stuff like that along with the shock to figure out where to bolt the things up into so that the suspension the car has like the right geometry and uh, that would be a total pain and that's where these things come in so these are developed by a guy uh, that runs a company called dauberton performance it's out of the midwest i'll throw a link in the description and this is a really really cool shortcut for anybody that's basically hot rod building wants to use c5 you know suspension and suspension geometry and all that stuff which is very affordable i got all of this for like 1200 bucks on ebay this is a little bit more expensive it's like three thousand bucks for both of them i think roughly uh just ballparking it there again i bought all this stuff a long time ago so i'm just happy to be able to use it so anyways what these things do is on the bottom they have mounts so that they bolt in perfectly into the the C5 uh, subframe and then on the top they have already figured out exactly where everything goes so that's where your shock goes at exactly the right angle this is where your control arm goes etc etc so that I believe is the front end kit and that's the rear end kit and that stuff bolts onto there allows you to mount your shock mount your upper control arm and then all you got to do is build your frame rails to be the right width to accept these to accept your suspension so my frame rail is going to slot right in there then you bolt your frame rail in and you got yourself a roller with the correct C5 geometry. It's really, really cool stuff. So actually I found out about these on eBay first, ordered these, was really stoked, ordered these, and then we never did the project. So now I kind of, you know, designed my frame and this whole build around utilizing all of this stuff. So before we get into mounting these, what I'm gonna call like the suspension pickup management system, right? That's what I'm gonna call it. Anyways, uh, we need to change out the suspension, the actual chalk edge for these 
front and rear subframes. The C5 uses some pretty archaic and weird monoleaf leaf spring technology to keep these things shocked, like to keep them sprung, and then they have a shock to control the rebound. And uh, BC Racing jumped on board as a sponsor of this build to give us their coilover system where you remove this monoleaf and then you have the coilover, you can adjust the height and then obviously the rebound and stuff like that. So that's really what we need here because we need to fine, fine tune our height of this build, height off the ground if we wanna get it as low as we need to, and then obviously having really good performance level suspension is a win. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the BC Racing coilover kit and let's bring it in here and unbox it. Got the coilovers unboxed. These just look so sexy. I love the black and gold uh, coloring on these. It's gonna look great on the car too. These ones are the fronts where you see this little doohickey on the bottom and these ones are the rear. Uh, huge thanks to BC Racing for sponsoring this build. Guys, there's gonna be a link in the description. They have coilovers for so many applications out there. Go check them out. They're a really, really great product. And uh, if you wanna know how to do the installation that I'm gonna do, it's, it's pretty simple from what I've seen. You remove the leaves and then you bolt in your coilovers and then the upper section of my coilovers still won't have anything to bolt up to quite yet till I install this stuff. So it's a pretty weird way of going about it. But if you are watching because you have a C5 or C6 Corvette and you want to do coilovers, Taylor Ray has a great instructional video out there on how to install these things. So I'm going to link that down below as well. So let's get these babies on the, I, would, I was going to say on the car. Let's get them on the suspension. All right guys, one down, one to go. This leaf spring in the front, such a pain to get out of there. Installing the coilovers is easy, it was nothing. The leaf spring is so hard, I had to take the front sway bar out and a bunch of other stuff. My advice is if you get stuck on this thing, try if your screws aren't, aren't totally seized. There's a screw right here, screw it all the way down so it recedes all the way back in. It'll give you a little bit more room to get that thing out. I've read online that the rear sway bar will not be such a pain, so let's move on to the rear. Got the BC Racing coilovers installed now on both the front and the rear suspension units things. <laughs> so now it's time to move over to the Dauberton stuff, the uh, magical suspension pickup and frame mounting adapter thingamajigs. And uh, I'm going to start here on the rear because that's kind of what we got front and center. And that should be this guy right here. There's about five pages of instructions on how to do this properly because there's all sorts of like fun like bushings and fittings to make sure this thing is really snug and a precise fit, which is going to be awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted up on this rear first and then we'll move over to the front. Got the back section mocked up. So this is the thing that I just bolted on to here. Uh, there is, in the instructions, it says to bolt all this stuff up right now, but we gotta send some bolts through here into here. So I'm gonna just not, I'm gonna skip that part for now, hoping that it won't bite me in the ass later. So one good thing is that this means I made my frame width the right size, hey hey. Uh, and the other thing is it fits really nicely, so that's great. So this is just roughly, four to back, this is just kind of an arbitrary position. We're gonna need to get the front done, put the front in, and then I'll measure to the back axle point, and that's the only reference point I really have on this thing that sets the whole width of the vehicle, which whatever. So the back's done. Now we got to move on to the front and do the same type of deal on the front, get the two units on there, and then we'll move it over into our frame.
the front is so ridiculously far away from the back. We gotta fix that. I don't know where this needs to, I'll, I'll figure out where that needs to go after we do the permanent install on the front, but how freaking cool is this, guys? Like you sit right here, you sit deep into here, your feet go down there, and that's your front suspension. This is gonna be so awesome. I'm so excited. There's this weird thing that sits off of this. I can go look on the C5 and see what this is. Luckily, it doesn't hit the frame. It clears by a tiny little gap, but should probably take it off since we don't even know what it is. Uh, we probably don't need it. Hopefully we won't need it. The um, uh, steering wheel, like the shaft that comes off your steering wheel to come into here, to come into the steering rack, is at a pretty intense angle. We're gonna have to bring it back in, but I think it's gonna be okay. We just need some good uh, bearings and stuff and we'll be able to keep that thing straight. I think what we'll do is we'll come off of here right away with like a 45 if we can. If not, we'll go straight and then one over to here and then back up to your driving position, which is gonna be, I don't know, right around here. So that'll be awesome. Uh, things are looking really good. I'm very, very excited about this. The fit of the frame is just so awesome and like, like dead on. I'm really, really happy about it. So the next thing that we gotta do is drill holes in the frame to be able to bolt these guys into the frame. So we'll be clamping the frame down so it's perfectly flat with this mounting surface and then we'll clamp it to this as well. And then we'll drill our holes so like you see there's a hole there and there and there and there. And then on the side we'll drill through, we'll bolt through. Then once we have this all done, because we know that these go exactly between the welds and then that's where that goes. Then we're gonna measure our way back to find out where our back axle goes. Then we'll set the back one and then whatever's left over there is just, you know, leftovers. So let's go ahead and get this fully bolted and mounted into the frame and then we can, uh, we can move on to the back section. Oh, this is exciting. This is really exciting. Damn, I am tired of drilling, <laughs> but this is fit on here. Five bolts in each side that mount this, this guy to this. Now this is all just kind of mock fit right now. There's some insulation that goes in between this and this so you don't have galvanetic corrosion and some other things like that. We're also gonna develop kind of a, a plate system that gets more of this. That way we don't uh, risk crushing the tube later on. But I just kind of want to get everything mocked up and, and fit up. So the next thing I would like to do is work on the suspension. So we have our upper control arms that bolt in right here and right here. And then we have our new BC Racing coilover that's going to bolt in right there. Let's go ahead and do that around the four corners and then put some wheels on here. Uh, okay, here's what went well. I got the suspension in here. Uh, it's not tightened down yet, but the suspension linkage and everything is all, all, all installed. So that that's there. Uh, ran into a problem. So these are the Koenig Ampliforms that we were gonna run on this build. Uh, get rid of the winter tires and put some nice nittos on there. And we we're gonna run these. And these are 5x114.3 lug pattern. And I thought that the C5 Corvette was, but no, it's some weird five by 120.7 or something like that. Ah! Set a goal to have this thing a roller by the end of the night. It's already 11, but um, now five by one one, no, five by 120.7 is not far from five by 120, which is BMW's lug pattern. We have a few BMWs laying around. I don't want to steal Kyle's wheels. I'd feel bad about that, even though this car isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, but in the spirit of using junk from around the shop that we're not using, I know of another wheel. It's not the right size. So we're going to run with these Ampliforms in the long run, but uh, temporarily, let me go get a test wheel. As if that car hasn't been through enough. Oh, you know what I actually just thought about too, is we have a full set of wheels that we haven't, we didn't use on the Datsun 240Z project. So they're just sitting inside stacked up. Those should be also five by 120. Okay, so now I got two sets of wheel options. 
That's how you know you have too many wheels, when you accidentally don't have the right size wheels and then you have eight other wheels laying around that would fit. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I was very worried about this happening. This is actually like my biggest worry in the whole build. And here we are. It just doesn't look anything like the rendering because it's way too high. So I need to, I know it's, it's a little extra high because the suspension is expecting an engine. So it will settle with weight, but I need to consult the design and see how far off we are. So I'm gonna jump into the computer. All right, I had a talk with the inside of the computer and well, it's, it's, not, it's not impossibly far off. This, if we're gonna be exactly two to the design, this is, uh, this is six inches high from the design. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room within the design where the frame goes through the middle of things and it could be at the top of things. So we could be three inches off. So we're three inches off. So can we lower this thing three inches more? I definitely think so. I looked at my off-road Corvette outside and the suspension is like totally flat where the suspension goes down like this right now. So, um, and then also, you know, having BC Racing as a partner here, we might be able to get some coilovers that just like dump this thing a lot further. Cause look how much ground clearance there is right here. You don't need that much ground clearance in the front of a car. That's absurd. The steering rack is just going like this and then like down. So it's monster trucking right now. Probably because there's no weight on this thing. That's also a very good point, Chris. So um, since I don't have 700 pounds of bricks to slam onto the front of this thing to set the ride height, we will have to do some imagining, but um, I'm also gonna do some tinkering right now, see how far I can get. There is definitely some adjustability in these things. These are just out of the box. So we can definitely set those to max low and see how far. So right now this is 24 inches off the ground. Uh, I will, I, let, me, let me tinker for a little bit and let's see how far we can get. Crisis averted, at least for the most part. So uh, Kyle came and joined me, we both sat on this, and just with our like collective roughly 400 pounds of weight, we're able to drop this thing like, I don't know, more than an inch. Uh, and then I also lowered the coilover uh, as well. And then, so now we went from 24 inches to 22 inches, uh, which puts us four inches off the design. So we're, we're within one inch. That was 400 pounds that we should have between our powertrain and you know the driver's cockpit area and all the other metal that we're adding on here. There should be well over a thousand pounds um, you know, added onto this vehicle that will help bring it down. But the other thing is I'm gonna communicate with BC and see if we can't maybe, maybe hopefully build a custom coilover for this vehicle. That'd be really, really cool to have a kind of a one-off set. Um, it wouldn't need to, we wouldn't need to change much. We just need a shorter um, shock housing. That would be it. Cause we're maxed out on the lowering right now. So if we shorten that shock housing up another inch, then we're totally golden and we can be like, just like the design. So uh, it worried me at first, but I'm not really feeling that blocked now, which is great. All right, we got the car in like kind of the normal car position. Kyle helped me push this thing around. It's really long. It's ridiculously long. Uh, this is gonna be weird. So I am not gonna get be too phased by this right now. I know we can lower this thing down more. I mean, the reality of it is, is that that is the front subframe and it is insanely high off the ground. So it's just a configuration of working with this uh, coilover uh, and working with BC Racing to get a coilover built that's the right size. And then if we uh, lower it too far and get a bunch of weird camber, issues we can custom make this upper control arm which would change our camber so i'm not worried about it we're just going to keep building and we're going to get it exactly like the design i think between the weight and small changes to this coilover we're going to be good i think the back won't be as much of a problem because it has a lot more adjustability you can see how much room for improvement it has so now it's time to get the back onto this thing i'm going to reach my goal tonight of having this thing be a true roller. So what I'm gonna do is jump into the computer. I'm gonna measure from this point right here, this joint right here, measure back to where my axle needs to be, find that, slide this thing back to where it needs to be, drill some holes in the frame, bolt this carriage up to the frame, 
and then see you then. It's midnight. Jesus. Got the frame bolted up to the cradle. Uh, I did not use all the bolts. You'll see that there's only like two uh, because there's six bolts on this one on each side and then you have to drill through both sides of the frame which is 12 on each side and it's 24 holes to drill and it's late. So I did about, what did I do, eight of them? And, and that's gonna be good for now. Anyways, every time we do a build, I, I always want there to be some sort of a takeaway for people that might not be out here building like crazy insane things like what I'm trying to do with this thing. And I just wanna point out that this strategy and this methodology of building right here relates to any, any type of build that you wanna do. Like say you wanted to take that old Mustang body and put it on a new frame, or you wanted to take an old car, derelict car, and put it on a new frame or anything like this. This stuff can transfer on. Like this same process could be used to build many 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 different things you build the frame the shape that you want make sure the outer width is the right way use some cradles like this and use some suspension like this and you will have a rolling chassis in a matter of days and and that way you can you know chase your dreams if be, be it building old hot rods or whatever you might want to do uh, this is applicable to a lot of different types of builds so I just wanted to point that out so now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into these coilovers lower them down as far as they will go max low and then we'll go ahead and install our upper control arm and our coil over into the cradle. <laughs> this car is so long, it's ridiculous. The wheelbase is insane. It looks awkward right now, but don't worry. This is gonna look amazing when we're done. You just gotta believe in the schematics. The back was definitely playing ball a lot more with being lowered. It, it's very, very close to where we want it. It's possible that once we add the weight of the engine, transaxle, and rear differential that it'll be right there. Um, or we might want a little bit more adjustability to go down a little bit further. But again, you can see the rear subframe still far off the ground, so. Uh, but the back is on. I reached my goal. This thing is now a roller, which is freaking amazing. And it's still light enough that I can pick up the back or the front end and slide it around if I need to. I can even deadlift it if I'm feeling really strong. So before I showed you a 3D model that was just like a poor rendering, I sent those off to a guy that did some graphical renderings of some ideas and threw some of our logos on here. So I'm gonna show you these right now. They're really, really cool. And it really shows kind of the flat panel body style that I'm looking for. It incorporates a lot of our fun sponsorship logos. I'm, I'm really excited about how this looks. And so what I'm thinking is it's gonna be a mixture of, of this, which is kind of like the cyberpunk, like futuristic look, mixed with a little bit more um, apocalypse, a little bit more rough. Now there's been a lot of talk about the apocalypse builds and how this one's like can't go over rocks so it's not apocalypse. But you know, the, the future and how the world might end in the future could happen in many different ways and it could still happen with clean roads. But I'm working on an animated short that kind of tells a story of, of what the, like the, the imaginary world that these cars would fit in. And I mean, really all, all we're doing is we're having fun building cars that are kind of just a cool theme that is just, uh, you know, having fun just putting our ideas into a car. So it doesn't really matter that much anyways. Anyways, if there are any artists out there that want to work with us on that, I'm, I'm pretty close to having the whole package put together, but we need a couple still images made. So if you're like a top level artist that can make really, really good futuristic, it's got to be futuristic sci-fi. Uh, like it could be a 2D image or a 3D image. It doesn't really matter, um, but we're going to render it out to a flat image to use for the animation. Let me know. And then I'll be able to tell you guys the story of kind of how this all fits together. And one last bit of news, we're actually gonna change up the uh, the game plan a little bit. We were gonna rotate through everybody's car, but we thought, you know, that might get a little bit confusing and just kind of hard to watch and stuff like that. And we all actually really have a lot more fun all working together on the same project. So I think what we're gonna do is Kyle and I are gonna help out Oscar. We're gonna get his car to the point where it is 
functioning street legal has all the body panels on it and the lights and everything to, to drive around and then he can work on the apocalypsifying the theming of it um, in, in his spare time same deal and then we're gonna move on to Kyle's car we're gonna do the same exact thing we got some uh, you know horsepower modifications that we're gonna do with that and then we're gonna button it up and then he's gonna work on the kind of apocalypse style and his theming or cyberpunking or whatever he wants to do to that to make it look crazy he's gonna do that on his downtime as well and then we're all gonna work together on this one just so we're doing one build finish not finishing it but getting it to a point where it's like okay now you guys are going to see the finale when they're all done same with the next build and then we'll do this build and then they'll all kind of be unveiled together as a little trio all right i think that's where we're going to end it thank you guys all so much for watching thanks for watching all the way through to the end uh follow us on instagram beast for build on instagram check out our new merch we got a bunch of new merch guys at beastforbuild.com and uh, on the next one, we're gonna be back to Oscar's car. This thing is coming along really quickly. It's gonna be really cool. So please join us on that one when we finally finish a Mustang body swap. See you soon. Peace!